Evening, my darklings. It is a night of strange and unusual news. A missing news crew member and... NASA and science is telling us something that, well, Greg and I talked about just two weeks ago. Aliens are also under the spotlight in a million-dollar challenge, and a NASA astronaut refuses to be silenced. What did a fourth-grade teacher get in trouble for doing this week? Oh, you're going to love that, so make sure you stay tuned. And Ed and Lorraine Warren are under fire in a brand new documentary. We've got a lot of crazy things coming your way, plus some exciting news and a brand new, brand new spanking pair of tunes coming your way. That's all next right here on the very best in Paranormal Talk Radio. I'm Dave Schrader, and this is the Paranormal 60 News. It is time for the very best in paranormal programming, at least tonight, right now on this channel that you're watching. There's no other good shows besides me right here, but thank you very much for tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring in co-anchor for the night, news reporter par excellence, Greg, the paranormal detective Lawson. Greg, good to have you back, sir. Man, I am so glad to be here. Chachi is uh, fighting miserable, miserable traffic. You said Texas traffic is out of control this week, huh? Yeah, man. Um, there's a lot of uh, construction going on on I-35 and all, all around. And, uh, you know, it looks like the economy's good. Economy's good. They're fixing stuff. People are out traveling and buying junk. So Chachi might get in at some point tonight. He was so bogged down in traffic, literally left at 2 o'clock this afternoon from his destination. So he would be home by 7 he is still not home, according to the uh, GPS. Greg, it's telling him, don't look forward to seeing him for at least another 30 to 40 minutes. Wow. So he may get here. He may not. We don't know. Poor. And by the time he gets here, he's just going to need to go straight to a bottle. He might just be slapping the bottle into his mouth and drink it along with us for the remainder wow. of the show. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. We got a lot of cool stuff going on. And Greg and I are here right now, trick or treat bags in hand. And I'm about to tell you what you could put in our bag that will make us very happy. Oh, not super stickers and super donations. Those are great. I mean, feel free to do so if you wish, but, but you know, what would help even more rate and review this program. That's right. If you listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, CastBox, or Podbean, any one of those, you can rate and review this show. So please consider doing so. Rate and review The Paranormal 60. Give it five stars because it'll just feel good. You'll get tingles in special places. And write oh, something yeah. nice like, boy, that Greg is one handsome fella. I sure love the news whenever Greg is on. Just something kind and full of love for us. Because in the month of October, it is our month to hit it strong and learn to meet new people and increase our, our reach. So please help us out. And you do that by rating and reviewing the show. For those of you watching live, hit that like button, hit it now. And then for those of you watching later on, hit that thumbs up the like button and remember to subscribe so that you never miss a minute in the very best in paranormal content. I have to be careful with that, uh, with that tagline because our, our network's getting bigger. Our, yeah. our network's getting bigger, and I think people are going to start getting a little owly when I keep referring to myself as the best in paranormal. But you know what? I'm bringing people under my hey. umbrella, Greg, which means they're the best That's adjacent. Right. Yeah, It's called a, it's called a network, Dave. Yeah, it's a it is. We've hey, got a brand I'm, new paratune, dude. Brand new paratune. I'll, I'll talk, let you talk in a second, I promise. I'm just reading off the script you gave me. We've got a brand new paratune we're going to introduce in a little bit with a dear friend who we haven't heard from. For quite a while, but I am going to bring her on. She's going to introduce us to the song. We get to listen to that a little bit later on. And then in the second half of tonight's show, we're going to be joined by some very dear friends with a big announcement. So make sure that you stay tuned for that. Now, Greg, what was it that you wanted to tell me? 
No, I was just saying I missed you, man. Well, before I, you do you that, know, just let me uh, go on it. No, I'm just kidding. You missed me. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, dude. I, I don't know. I uh, I was I was it's, actually regretting uh, not uh, being around on Wednesdays. It was weird. It's okay, buddy. You know, you have a life, and I want you to live that life as full as you possibly can. Yeah. Well, you, you've been traveling too. So, I mean, yeah, lots of traveling. And uh, as a matter of fact, thank you for throwing that out to me. Let me just make a quick mention. I'm going to be at Scarefest this weekend, October 20th through the 22nd at Central Bank Center in Lexington, Kentucky. Shane Pittman's going to be there. Jack Osborne's going to be there. You've got members of the Ghost Hunters team that are going to be there. It's going to be an amazing time. Plus so many of your favorite horror movie icons are going to be on hand. You can get information about that at darknessevents.com. Let's uh let's get started this first news story you've got for me Greg. I I had to laugh because uh I love that NASA and science is starting to tell us where we should look when our guest 2 weeks ago on the news told us the same right. exact exact thing. So what's going on? Yeah, Scott Cassell confirmed what I'm about to tell you. Uh it it says we should be looking for UFOs underwater according to scientists hello all they had to do is check with scott and he could under the sea yeah yeah so um so so for years Mm -hmm. no the the scientists say for years people have claimed to see ufos in the sky but until recently the reality of these aircraft has been widely disbelieved until Mm -hmm. 2023 when the pentagon and nasa finally admitted they too have seen these things and are studying what we now call unified aerial unified unified aerial phenomena unified yeah and, and for, for the, for the uh, <laughs> for unidentified the paranormal water submersibles yeah. yeah yeah uh for the paranormal 60 crew it, they're called uaps However, yeah. so far, the Pentagon and NASA have only been speaking to UFOs as they saw above the ground or above uh, in the sky. And it mm-hmm. seems that they've forgotten to search the best hiding spot, which is, look at these folks down there, in the ocean. That's Now, right. have you actually seen this formation that they have off the Baltic Sea? That's yes. what's on our screen right now. They yes. call it the Millennium Falcon. And yeah. the overviews of this thing are bonkers. It looks like the freaking Millennium Falcon is at rest on yeah, the bottom I'm, of the Baltic Sea. I'm pretty sure something happened there. I'm not yeah. sure what it was, but something happened. Look so up anyway, Millennium Falcon, Baltic Sea. You'll thank me later for those of you who are looking at the photo. Uh, too bad it's not the Millennia Falcon. Not, anyway. not bad at all. Millennium Falcons, just even better. Yeah. Uh, professor yeah. of Marine Environmental Sciences, Brian Helmuth of Northeastern University, explained, if I were investigating an alien planet like Earth, the ocean mm-hmm. would definitely be the place where I would start. Not only does it comprise a vast majority of living space and living organisms on Earth, but it also comparatively unpopulated by the species called humans that seem to be uh, uh, hell bent on destroying the planet. UFO mm. experts have always assumed that aliens could use the world's vast oceans to hide after being spotted or avoid being seen at all. Mm. Humans have only recently developed the technology to begin diving deeper into the oceans and find out what's down there. But even with this uh, capability, the oceans are so vast it would take lifetimes, not lifetime, lifetimes to explore it, as well as the fact that the oceans and uh, they are perfect hiding spots for these particular vehicles. It's also important to note that most UFO researchers agree that these vessels can easily move from air to water. Documentary filmmaker Jeremy Corbell explained to the press, it's understood that they disappear into the water, leading to the hypothesis that these objects are transmedium and have the ability to transverse space, air, and sea without destruction, seemingly defying what known laws of inertia are. A UFO specialist and researchers hope that now the Pentagon and NASA, uh, uh, that now that they have disclosed the reality of these crafts to the public, they will continue their studies while looking further into the evidence in the oceans that they comprise. So, yeah. Yeah, now two, what was it, two weeks ago on Wednesday night, we not only did a little bit of news, but we we interviewed a gentleman that we met. This guy's a famous National Geographic uh, filmmaker and, and underwater dive specialist. 
who came upon an insane craft. If you miss that show, go back a couple of weeks and go listen to that because uh, I, the responses we're getting are phenomenal. People are blown away by it. I've had people that have seen and witnessed the same thing or similar. So go check it out in case you missed it. Hmm. Hmm. Crazy stuff. There now this, this is bonkers, right? Uh, aliens. Uh, of course, all over the news, people are talking about them. Can't get enough of the aliens. So Ring Ring has decided to throw their hat into the ring. Wow. See, see, they did yeah, there? yeah I didn't do much. It was really dumb, actually. So this is this is an interesting piece of information that just came out. Evidence is growing that there is life on other worlds. And now Ring is offering one million dollar prize oh. for anyone that has hard proof. The Amazon-owned smart home security device company said that it will offer the prize to anyone who captures unaltered scientific evidence of extraterrestrial life on their doorbell camera. That's That seems very like a very limited scope. So you can capture this, but only on our door camera. So like if you wake up in the middle of the night and they're in your room, do you have to go run down to the front door, take it off, run upstairs with it and film them or they won't accept the 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 footage? That's a great question, Dave. It's bonkers. That's why you're a uh, newsman. That's it. I, I push. I push boundaries. I want to know more. Well, considering that NASA and SETI have been searching for alien life for decades, the chances of anyone winning is low. <laughs> so wow. Ring is really not really expecting to win on anybody to win. But it's more evidence of the growing craze around UFOs. So I think it's it's kind of interesting. With the new sightings and further evidence that life forms might exist beyond Earth's atmosphere, there's a possibility that extraterrestrial activity could be happening right outside your front door. That's Boom. what Ring wrote in a blog post on Wednesday, inviting users to submit videos to their website where they will be Reese, an extraterrestrial expert. I've got mm -hmm. to go there and find out who said expert is. Um, yeah, this is going to be weird. Ring is having a contest and is asking people to capture evidence of extraterrestrial life on their Ring devices, of course. Ring owners have until November 3rd to turn in their submissions, which will oh. be reviewed by a meteorologist and an astrobiologist. Hey. The winner will get $1 million grand prize paid out in $50,000 yearly installments for two decades. Wow. Yeah. Skeptics can win, too. Ring is also offering a $500 Amazon gift card for the most creative fake. Whoa. In July, a former U.S. intelligence officer told the congressional hearing that non-human biologics were recovered from alleged UFO crash sites. Ring's entry into the UFO hunt comes just months after the FTC accused the company of failing to protect customer privacy and allowing employees to access private videos. Why is that news not... You think the million-dollar... Uh, competition is to throw throw us off the scent of what's going on with Ring and its lawsuits. Yeah, that's bizarre. And uh, by the way, that alien has some really nice lips. Look at his lip. <laughs> that little angel peak on him or whatever. Is that an angel peak? I don't know what it's called. What's an angel uh, made him go? He said, Shh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're frightening me. So uh, we have a very short window to make some money here. We've short you have a ring. Do you have a ring on your door? Oh, I got multiple rings on my house. You can see everything. How do we, should we lay out Reese's pieces? That would help. I would imagine uh, me in like a uh, green suit and, you know, I could sneak around in the yard or something. Maybe like a big sign that says pile of cow anus. And then you have a plate with what appears to be like Funyuns. So the, the aliens go nuts for cow anus. I don't know if you've read I've the news, but it's true. Yeah. yeah so I've they come that. down. Your camera catches it. We split the million bucks. What do you say? I'm ready. Um, yeah. It's, it's kind of like, I guess, alien calamari. <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah. yeah. I like that. It's yeah, weird. Nobody's watching. No, nobody, not at all, except for the 265 people live on YouTube. That's wow, all. I gotta yeah. check there. YouTube. That's pretty good. Uh, all right, we get another story here. I'm gonna have to do double, double, double duty since our buddy is not here. Uh, Chachi, NASA astronaut Gordon Cooper. Oh, yeah, Are you familiar with Gordon Cooper? Oh, yeah, Gordon. Yeah, good old there Gordon is. Cooper claimed that the U.S. government knew about UFOs and was covering it up with alien knowledge, and he's known that for decades, right up until his death. 
He was the youngest member of the Project Mercury team, the first human spaceflight program, which achieved its goal of putting a man into Earth orbit and returning him safely. Following his NASA career, the aerospace engineer and test pilot made it his mission to expose the government's knowledge about extraterrestrial life. I keep hearing these stories from credible sources inside the government, and they just won't go away, he told the Washington Post back in 1978. I can't tell you the names of these sources, but they're credible. And frankly, I think the government should release the information that these sources have, no matter what the White House thinks. He appear, appeared on the Merv Griffin show in the same year and discussed a story that the government was able to keep one alive, meaning an alien, in case you were curious, Greg. Yeah. The astronaut could have been talking about J-Rod, a well-known conspiracy about an alien who supposedly survived a UFO crash and worked at Area 51. Speaking at a United Nations panel back in 1985, Cooper claimed he was sworn to secrecy while working for NASA. For many years, I've lived with a secret in a secrecy imposed on all specialists and astronauts, he said. But I can now reveal that every day in the USA, our radar instruments capture objects of form and composition unknown to us. The astronaut believes that the extraterrestrial vehicles and their crews were visiting this planet from other planets. He said they must be more technologically advanced than Earth and suggested a coordinated program to scientifically collect and analyze data. The astronaut once detailed his own UFO experience, saying he saw the typical saucer-shaped, double cylindrical-shaped metallic craft. However, his alien encounter isn't widely spoken about. Cooper died at his home in Ventura, California on October 4th, 2004. And ladies and gentlemen, thanks to modern technology, we have him on the phone from heaven. Gordon Cooper, you're on the line. Mr. Cooper, go ahead. Hey, Dave. Huh? No, that, that was you, Greg. Oh. Technology's not living up to its expectations. Right. Anyway, uh, here's a little bit of cool background. The Oklahoma native joined the Marine Corps after graduating from high school, later became an Air Force test pilot. There, he became fascinated with the space program and was named one of the Project Mercury astronauts in 1959. The astronaut piloted the Faith 7 spacecraft on a 22-orbit mission in 1963, then went to space for a second time. Six years later, he served as a command pilot on the eighth day, 120 revolution Gemini five mission. Man. It's a badass right there. Sitting in a bear can flying around. Crazy. Gotta love that. That's that is some power. Speaking of some power, you know, doing the show, we get an opportunity to talk to amazing people with amazing gifts. And I have got one of those people coming up right now it's time now for paratunes thank you thank you very much yeah yeah this powerful singer is amongst us now you might recognize her from her stints on darkness radio back in the day Woo! she is out there touring the world or at least parts of minnesota and north dakota singing <laughs> her beautiful heart out and she is here to share a brand new mm. paratunes katie hart welcome to the katie paranormal hart. 60 yeah i like Ooh. to see that nothing has changed with you nothing. dave oh, yeah literally <laughs> nothing it's all no. the same mm -hmm. wow <laughs> all the same love all that all the same <laughs> no it's good we're we're reaching more people we're doing it on video now these moving pictures katie i think they're gonna take off it's it, within like what six years or so i mean videos my god mm -hmm. the interwebs wow the interwebs and greg <laughs> is working diligently to figure out a way that he can turn your computer into a holographic projector so that the paranormal 60 news crew can surround you in your living room and yep. drink while oh we tell god. you the stories yep. oh my god <laughs> yeah that's only another 25 30 years off so just <laughs> around my 85th birthday it's going to be <laughs> off the charts uh let's get going here you have have got an amazing band sunflower fox and the chicken leg there it is there it Nailed is it. buddy <laughs> i will tell you that i'm a little disgruntled because it sounds like you're kind of ripping off my my band which is hillbilly o face and the flannel wearing five i gotta be honest with you but uh listen, none man, of us can I, sing I, 
or dance. I heard the so, name of your band and I was like, I'm just going to rip off Dave and I hope nobody notices. So <laughs> too late, too late. So you've got a song that you, you've been putting together for a while and you thought would be cool to premiere here on our program in time for the spooky season. Give us a little yeah. background on the song we're about to hear. Well, actually, so the band actually um, was kind of put together during the uh, during the pandemic. So, you know, most of us are professional gigging musicians and, um, you know, a lot of times we don't have a lot of time to write. And uh, this was actually the first song written during during the pandemic. So, yeah, it's been a long time coming. This this was written way back in April of 2020 and it's just coming wow. out now. Mm -hmm. produced and by. Song... Uh, oh, go ahead. No, go produced by. Uh, Ron Nevison, who you may know from uh, the Rolling Stones, The Who, Heart, um, Kiss, Vince Neil. Not familiar. Did he work with any bands we'd recognize? No. Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious. Wow, what a name dropper that cat is. Well, that's awesome. So uh, you, you've got this amazing producer behind you and you've got music you're dropping all the time, uh, from yeah. your band and some remarkable videos. We don't have a video for this, but we've got the audio, we've got it and, uh, introduce us. Can you give me a little background? What, what inspired this song? Um, you know, <laughs> the, what inspired it and what it kind of is about now are two very different things. Um, there mm -hmm. will be a music video. Um, my goal is to get it out by Halloween because it's spooky, but Lord only knows. Um, Cause you know, I'm learning how to do video editing. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, um, you know what, what kind of inspired it honestly was when the pandemic first was coming out, like everybody was trying all these different ways to get rid of, of this virus that we had no idea how to get rid of. And they're trying all sorts of different things. So mm. there's a lot of like comments about sage and crystals and running away from it and, and things like that. And that's how, that's how the song started because we were all just like locked away and kind of being shadows. Um, that's how it started. What it is now and what it means now are two very, very different things. You're not going to give us a little hint as to what this means now. Is that a more personal? Will we see some yeah. of that in the music video when it no. comes out? When you see when you see the music video, then you'll know. Ah, all There's right. Well, <laughs> when when the official video is out, send it in to me. We'll air it again on the show in its entirety. But ladies Absolutely. and gentlemen, without further ado, Sunflower Fox and the Chicken Leg with Shadow Girl. Run, run, shadow girl Run, run, shadow girl Run, run, shadow girl Run, run, shadow girl
shut old girl. Oh, it's over. <laughs> Excellent yeah. song, Katie. When we were recording it, we kept saying Run Run's Shadow Squirrel like over and over again because nice. we just kept having to sing that. Um, you guys are going to make me cry with all these really nice comments. Like, oh my God. <laughs> it's super Well, people want to know where they can stream it. I have a link on today's show for your page and how people can find you, listen to your songs and yep. uh, find more information. And I have a link to your website so people can also yep. go follow along and find out where you're going to be performing. Yep, it's on all streaming platforms already. We accidentally released it a week early because uh, we just hit a wrong button. That happened. Um, <laughs> yep. So it's already out. It's on everything. So it's on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, Deezer, um, everything, um, and YouTube and all the things. Um, the full album will be out um, end of the year, beginning of the year on vinyl and on CD. Oh, sweet. On vinyl. Yeah, buddy, of course. We're like a 70s style rock band. So, of course, you maybe. are. Yeah. That is awesome. Uh, Katie, love you with all my heart. And I do hope you'll come back and share some time with us. And maybe on a Wednesday night when you have time, we can have you fill in for Chachi or the Colonel when they're not here and you could do news like we used We're to do together. Totally <laughs> doing the news, man. <laughs> awesome. All right. I love you, my friend. The love band so is funny. Sunflower Girl and the Chicken Leg. The song is Shadow Girl. It's out and available through all of your favorite streamers. Go check it out now. All right. What do you think of that, Greg? Huh? It's awesome. Frank yeah. liked it. That power voice. I absolutely love her power voice. Amazing. And you know what's cool? She performs with other bands and does backup singing. And there's times where her backup singing blows lead singers off the stage. I know I'm probably not supposed to say that. I don't want to screw her on her gigs, but uh, yeah. she's so good at what she does. And a lot of the, the guys are smart enough to let her stand up and have a couple of solos during their shows. Uh, we saw the, the Elvis tribute show here, I think at the Ames center in Minnesota and uh, Katie came out and just blew the, just the ceiling off singing songs. So it's great to see her doing something she loves. And for those of you um, that are, are longtime fans of my programs, you recognize Katie Hart, who used to be a part of our news team back in the day. And she said she'll come back and play with us from time to time. So that'll be exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Katie Hart. All right, uh, Gregory, we've got yep. some things to talk about. We've got more news mm -hmm. to share. We've got a big announcement coming up in just a little bit. But before we do that, I do have a few things that I have to mention. First up, come see me at Scarefest. That's this weekend, October 20th through the 22nd in Lexington, Kentucky. Tickets and information are at scarefestweekend.com. Scarefestweekend.com. Right around the corner. Halloween weekend is almost here. You want to go out and investigate? Come with me and Medium Scotty as we go to the Haunted Shanley Hotel in Napanock, New York. There are tickets and information and ways to come see us, hang out, ghost hunt with us, meet and greet, and have some fun. Again, all that information is at darknessevents.com. And then this November, the ninth annual New Jersey Para Unity Expo is taking place in Woodbridge, New Jersey. Usually it was a one day event. It is now a full two days, lots of great talks. You get to meet uh, some of your absolute favorite paranormal uh, entertainment people. The Ghost Hunters crew is going to be on hand. The Ghost Brothers are going to be there. Adam Barry, Chip Coffee, Chris Smith, and Mike from uh, the Tennessee Wraith Chasers. Destination Now Project Fear will be there. Um, John Zaffis, you'll see me out there as well. And uh, it's just going to be an amazing time. I hope that you'll consider coming on out, finding more information about that again at Darkness events.com and a big thank you and welcome to parabox and paraboxmonthly.com backslash p60 if you are a fan of all things strange and unusual then you want parabox each month you get a beautifully detailed t-shirt soft perfect fabric amazing different things from aliens and monsters to ghosts and haunted locations and on each shirt there are blended in clues and a card that you get so you can actually try to break the ciphers and win amazing prizes for more information check out paraboxmonthly.com backslash p60 wow. all right we're back we're back let's get into a couple more news stories before we make this big announcement Let's Are you do ready, it. Greg. Yeah, I'm ready. All right. The story is yours, sir. Oh, it's mine. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's talk about uh, fourth grade teacher shows students Winnie the Pooh horror movie. Didn't turn it off despite the pleas of terrified children. 
<laughs> That's what I'm talking about. What the you know deuce? What? I'm I'm all about teachers trying to teach children about disappointment. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. A fourth grade teacher in Miami is facing backlash from parents after showing his class the 2023 horror slasher film, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Couldn't pick a better uh-huh. title than that. No. Yeah, the film was reportedly shown to students on Monday, October 2nd, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, which was made after the 1926 Winnie the Pooh book entered the public domain in January of 2022. It allows uh, a murderous versions of Pooh and Piglet as they terrorize a group of who? College, College women. women. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Of course. Yeah. The background on this is crazy, right? Christopher Robin stopped coming because he grew up and finally he returns with his girlfriend and he, and he wants to show them hundred acre wood. And when he gets there, it's desolate. It's a barren wasteland Aww. and there's body parts and blood everywhere. And they unleash the poo. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I just love that I can use that term. Unleash the poo. Yeah. You did it. It was yep. beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, according to Michelle Diaz, a uh, parent of one of the students at the Academy of Innovative Education in Miami Springs. The unnamed teacher didn't stop the movie, even though there were kids saying, hey, stop the movie. We don't want to watch this. Yeah, because that's what kids mm-hmm. say about horror mm-hmm. movies. So Diaz also told CBS News that uh, the class were exposed to 20 to 30 minutes of a movie. <laughs> movie. Yeah, 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, of a movie called Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Yeah. Uh, The release statement said, the Academy of Innovative Education has become aware that a segment of a horror movie, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Yeah. Uh, And and was shown the fourth graders that uh, was not suitable for that age. Our administration promptly addressed this issue with a teacher and has taken appropriate action to ensure the safety and well-being of the students. We are actively monitoring our students' mental health, and counselors and principals are already met with those students who have expressed their concerns about (laughs) Winnie the Pooh, blood and honey. Now, I've seen the news story on this, and they talked to the teacher, and I think they call him a professor in this fourth grade class, and he actually gave them a choice. He named a couple of movies, and Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey was the one they selected. Of course. So he played it for them, and he felt like, no, you chose this. You're going to sit there and watch this. And Consequences. He's teaching them consequences. Right. The administrators are not seeing it that way. So I put together a GoFundMe, not for him, but for me, to drink more because obviously I thought my school life screwed me up. This guy has got so much more on top of all the teachers we ever had. He's so great. Yeah, that's insane. Now, Why would you do that? Yeah, Blood and Honey, that should have been the clue to you. This is not the movie for your fourth grade class. You know. I don't. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i pretty sure if I was in fourth grade, I would want to be watching Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Blood and Honey. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty I much do remember. One. I went to a that Lutheran one. grade school. And do you remember the old Jiminy Cricket films when we were kids that would teach you about, uh, you'd you'd watch it and be like fire safety or whatever. And he was right. Yeah. And he's like, you know, uh, singing his little songs and halfway through somebody edited in an adult movie clip that was about two minutes long. And all of us in our, our little Lutheran grade school. (laughs) Turn it off. We don't want to watch this. We were such a provincial school. We didn't even have PE class together. So boys had PE class. Girls had PE class. There were a lot of questions to be answered after that. that. Yeah, a lot of questions. Very strange. Hmm. Uh, Speaking of a lot of questions that need to be answered, the Warrens, believe it or not, are back in the news right now. And uh, not as you would have thought. I mean, with Halloween right around the corner, you would think that there's some, you know, the people love their shows, their their movies, their documentaries. Well, uh, the brother of a so-called possessed boy is accusing Ed and Lorraine Warren of being con people in the Mm -hmm. new The Devil on Trial documentary now on Netflix. Most flicks, or folks rather, words is hard, most folks know the names Ed and Lorraine Warren from The Conjuring series, a hugely successful billion-dollar supernatural horror movie franchise that claims to dramatize the real-life ghost-hunting adventures of the Warrens. 
The Warrens supposedly investigated dozens of demons and evil spirits from hell. The popularity of their tales is no accident because the Warrens made themselves famous by writing books and carefully planned media campaigns. Hmm. The Devil on Trial provides insight into how exactly they found their book subjects. So Carl Glatzel was 15 years old at the time when his 11-year-old brother David Glatzel made headlines for being possessed by the devil. The boy's mother, whom Carl described as having her own agenda in the film, believed her son had been taken over by an evil spirit in the year 1980. She called the Warrens. Carl recalls the Warrens arriving at his childhood home, sitting down with his mother and David at the kitchen table to describe what might happen and how it might look if David were to be possessed. Would you say this is front-loading? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah? Well, yeah. you're not wrong. Uh, they were saying he could start cursing at you, spitting at you. He'll grunt and growl like a savage, Carl says in the film. My concern was, why talk about the subject when he's sitting right there? This kid, this 15-year-old kid's got more common sense than to, to do this, knowing why would you say this in front of it, uh, right in front of his brother. And sure enough, it wasn't long before, you guessed it, David was cursing, spitting, and growling like a savage at his wow. mother, Carl said. And the Warren showed, that was a very sexy growl, very <laughs> sexy possession. Mm -hmm. So uh, the mother, of course, was rocked by this fact that this all this all happened. Sure enough, wasn't long, as he said, before it all went completely out of control. The Warrens showed up with a microphone and camera to record all of it. Every mm -hmm. night, they had cameras ready, the microphones in hand, and it just turned into a show. The Warrens were far more focused on recording his brother than they were on helping him, according to Carl. After a friend of the family attempted to claim that he too had been possessed by the devil when he murdered his landlord by stabbing him four times, the Glatzels were thrust into fame. David's mother began taking Hollywood meetings and was involved in book deals with the Warrens. The Warrens promised to make the family millionaires. Cowell remembers the author hired to write the book. Gerald Brittle contested some of the facts, only to be shot down by Ed Warren. Ed said, come on, make it scary. People come to us. They buy scary. Mm -hmm. Even in an adult, David and his older brother, Alan, both of whom maintain to this day that David really was possessed by the devil, agree with their older brother that the family was exploited by the Warrens. Lorraine told me I was going to be a rich little boy from this book deal. That was a lie, David said in the film. In the end, how much do you think, Greg, how much do you think that the family made from the book deal? Which yeah, sold me a lot affected, of copies. Yeah, the affected family. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. How much do you think they made? A uh, hundred bucks. No, now you're being ridiculous. Oh, Where I, I don't know. Come on. I mean, no, I, I thought maybe they got messed out. Of Greg, it. Don't make me put you in a timeout. Say ten thousand dollars. No, five thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars in nineteen seventy-two. You said no, nineteen eighty. Way to pay attention, yeah. detective. Uh, yeah, in nineteen eighty, five thousand dollars in current day money was almost six thousand dollars. So it's still pretty impressive. Wow. If you think about it that way. Compared to the tens of thousands that the Warrens made, not even counting all the money from the Conjuring franchise. Mm. The Glatzel story was the direct inspiration for the 2021 Conjuring movie, The Devil Made Me Do It. Wow. It's like yeah. it's like Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Well, not exactly oh. like that at all. But uh, you know what? We've got some big news. A lot of people uh, have asked questions, and I think it's time we give them answers. So let me just start off by saying that we have something here. We have a little network for the audio listeners, not you on YouTube. You guys mm -hmm. got to work for you got to work for these other shows. Oh yeah, but the audio bank we give you something pretty special because every Monday when you listen to the Paranormal Sixty podcast, you get New England legends Look at those with guys. Jeff Langer and Roy Osher, right? And then, then Tuesdays, you get the Paranormal 60 with Dave Schrader and what other amazing guests I might have with me. And then there's this, this quiet spot that happens every Wednesday where nothing is released. But then Thursday, you're back with another episode of the Paranormal 60 News with Dave Chachi, the paranormal detective, and hopefully one day the colonel will wow. return. And then Fridays, Fridays, we go to the land down under. 
and we have true hauntings with Anne and Renata, our dear friends, who share insights to strange happenings. But I look at the week and I think Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, two great little bookends, but there's no book. Where's, where's Wednesday? In between those ends. We need a Wednesday. We need a Wednesday. So I, I scoured the interwebs. Hmm. I interviewed countless fives of people to wow. find the right group to put in the spot. And I think, I think I'm pretty, pretty pleased with what we've got. We have got into the obscure that's going to begin airing on the audio platform right here, beginning next Wednesday. You'll be able to listen to them on Wednesday. Don't worry for those of you viewers, our show is still live Monday and Wednesday nights here on YouTube with the audio being released Tuesday and Thursday. But now you've got, let's review this for the slow, New England Legends on Monday. You've got the Paranormal 60 on Tuesday, Wednesdays into the obscure, Thursdays, Paranormal 60 news, Fridays, true hauntings. And ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you. Man to the cast and crew of the new program joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin with Tressa Slater, whose microphone is muted. Let's let her know that. So she, yeah, rookies, it just happens every Listen, time. Listen, come on, Tressa, give me a break. Well, come I'm on. giving you a break. You get a Wednesday spot on our network. Oh, that's, that's right. Thank you. Good. Yeah, thank you. And joining Tressa is her good friend and mine, also muted, Jenny Monroe. <laughs> Hi, Jenny. But I got it. I got it. I turned it off. Hi, guys. Good to have you on. Thank you for being here as well. And then, ladies and gentlemen, this is this is the catalyst, the one that brought this meeting together, because I've had the opportunity to go investigate Joliet State Prison on a few occasions and had a remarkable time. And part of the reason it was so fun was because of the remarkable volunteers. I've talked about this. And one of those volunteers is uh, involved in this show. Hmm. And uh, she, although she's no longer at Joliet State Prison, she is part of this program. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's Kara Phillip. Hello, Kara. Hello. So it's a pleasure to have the three of you join us and uh, be a part of the network now. And maybe, I don't know which one of you wants to be the mouthpiece here, but give people a little idea of what they can expect when they tune in next Wednesday to Into the Obscure. Well, we have all kinds of stuff. We have ghosts. We have cryptids. We have all sorts of UFO because we are truly a UFO supporting podcast. All sorts of stuff. Yeah, not UAP. UAP yeah. in the trash. It's UFO nope. all the way all yep. the time. Wow. Yep. Oh, gee, ladies. I like that. See? Anti-UAP. Anti. <laughs> Anti UAP. Uh -huh. Well, that's all right. I like the fact that you guys are, are clinging to the old and <laughs> we are the new and it just works out really well together. But uh -huh. what I really like about them, Greg, is, you know, the brotherhood of fun that we have here on the show every Wednesday night live. No, I'm not real clear on it. Well, you're usually <laughs> the one getting poked at, so maybe it's not as much fun for you as it is for me, the Colonel and Chachi. But a lot of people love the camaraderie, <laughs> the brotherhood between us, the drinks that flow like the River Nile. And now you've got another show with three equally talented and funny, subvertive yes. people those, into those the Those are paranormal. true things you said. You're, I all like true. all of this. Yes. 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 We are charming I, and funny. And beautiful yes. too. I got to look a light bulb. Yep. Yeah. And it's full of information certain. that we get All from sorts. other people. Exactly. <laughs> we just have them come on and tell us the information. Mm -hmm. and we yeah. Well, that's that's mm -hmm. the secret for all of us. <laughs> One hour at a time. Fill it up. Uh, what? Oh, Jenny's had to go. Oh. Sorry. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, Jenny. Oh. And the, oh no. Oh. The connection we established. There she is. <laughs> um, we're looking forward to having you guys join the network, and I think you guys are going to bring a lot of fun. And, and you know, I always have people tell me, Dave, why don't you have more women on the show? I have a lot of women that are guests on the show, but now I'm expanding our network. So you've got Ray and Jeff on Monday. You've got me on Tuesday. Now the, the Wednesday is filled with these lovely ladies from Into the Obscure. Thursday, it's back to guys. And then Friday, <laughs> more women. See? I'm trying to balance the whole nature. And I kind of mm -hmm. feel like, all right, but Dave, only two days with women. Well, Jeff Belanger and I. <laughs> you know, yeah. We got cats. <laughs> yeah, we all own cats. So there's you automatically yeah. that uh, affinity between all of us. But we're excited to have you guys be a part of this. And we're excited. I had a special news story that came out today <gasps> that I would like to involve you ladies in. 
Do tell. Yes. We are in. If you guys fit this, I don't know if you heard about this, but uh, back in the day, there was uh, there was witch trials. Oh, I've wow. never heard of this. What are you talking about? Really? really? Your mouth, there was no such there. thing. In 1692, when Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Mm. I don't think it was I might born. Be off. I don't know. Might, might I don't be know. Off 200 right. years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the, there was people being put to death for practicing witchcraft. And I was a little thrown. Greg, let me ask you this. You're a detective. What would you say if you had to pick the top three things that someone would have to do to be considered a witch in 1692? What do you think those three things would be? Well, uh, you bind them and see if they'll float. Okay. If they're, so if they're made of wood, they're probably a witch. Oh, made of wood. Uh, Not on the list, but wood. an important note. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. I, that's, I mean, that's, you're asking me what I would do. Yeah. I would ask <laughs> them see if they're made of wood first. Okay. <laughs> oh, just generally. If How would you like eyeball somebody and be like, oh, that's a witch? Yeah. You know, uh, a crooked nose, uh, a cat, and, uh, a broom. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, All yeah. things I would have put on the short list. Not there. So far. Hmm. You're batting zero for two. Wow. So a wart? Yeah, well, Does she have a wart? A wart. <gasps> yeah. Hold tight. Let's Gotta look at wart. this list. Ladies, I need to know, and I, I see if you're mm. surprised. I need to see a show of hands on how many of these certain things. And Greg, you can go and play along as well. Uh, the same hey, I'm only one chromosome away from being a... Uh, <laughs> Congratulations. Charged, men were charged as witches as well. Yeah. Yeah. The Salem witch trials were one of the darkest times in history of the United States, claiming the lives of several innocent people accused of being witches. Hmm. But what did you have to do to be considered a witch back in 1692? First of all, you have to be a woman. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Show of hands. Does anybody feel I that? Am, uh, I'm a woman. Three of you. Mm. In, in, not looking so good for them. Yeah. If you're a woman, you probably would have been blamed for making deals with the devil. Throughout history, women were mm. accused of witchcraft more often than men. And in Salem, 19 people were hanged for being witches. One of those 19, or out of those 19, rather, 14 were women. Mm. Only five <laughs> were men. People believe that women were more prone to sin than it's men. True. Yes, I did mean, eat the apple. We you ate have, the apple. Obviously. We have more fun. Exactly. We have more fun. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We're better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, the standards are just really different for us. So I yeah, that's true. It's hard yeah. to win. It's hard to win. Yeah. All right. So so far, three of you are in the first category. You're a woman. Here's another one. Woman. You must have a mole, a freckle, a birthmark, or a wart. Do any of you have those? So Everybody then? has those. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Warts? I'm sorry. What, what is I'm going sorry. on I'm with sorry. you? I'm sorry. I was just going with no warts. I mean, I, mean, I didn't freckles. miss the warts, Tressa. Everyone yeah. has yeah. a freckle. Everyone has a freckle. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody has freckles. Yeah. And a everybody. birthmark. And Not most, everybody. Yeah. 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 It was a regular occurrence for witch hunters to search suspects' bodies. Mm. Mm. Especially when those suspects were women. Women. Mm. 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 Huh. They were looking for moles, freckles, or birthmarks. If any of those were found, they were interpreted as the mark of the devil. <laughs> the devil's marks were described as raised or flat patches of skin. So it could be raised or flat. So now, this is where you could get in trouble, Greg. Especially right now, looking at the tone of your face, the coloring. <laughs> If your skin was red or blue or purple or brown in color, yes, that or white or that look right there, which, which <laughs> nailed it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're going mm. down, man. I'm starting to worry about. I'm ready. Line myself with here. This is <laughs> this is not good news. All right. Uh, so so far, women, birth mol moles, freckles, birthmarks. Birth okay. Moles. <laughs> I Here's one. Earth Here's one. Here's one. I think uh, I'm automatically out of the loop on this. Married, but I have too few or no children. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh -huh. That's you and me, Jenny. I mean, you're safe. Too few too or no. Few? Too, too, too few. That's not for no. you to ask, woman. <laughs> it's true. Well, right there, there I'm a witch. I'm questioning yeah. a man. Mm -hmm. I have zero. I have zero of those children. I have no, one. Just, so... just deal with it. Just go with it. It's one so, already show feels of hands. Like not enough. Show of hands. Who has too few or none in the children category? Oh, so all of you. 
Soon it feels as... like too many with two. I mean, that's already a lot. Yeah. Uh, in the early days of colonial America, colonial, no. <laughs> you got it. Oh, I got to do that. Yep. Yeah. In the early days of colonial America, people pinned normal everyday occurrences on witches, including spoiled milk or butter. Mm. Yeah. Butter. Yeah. Makes sense. Butter. Yeah, yeah. I'll reason, do that. Oh, yeah. yeah for some reason, the that. teats are not producing milk, witches. They'd be faulted for that, too. So as you can yep. see, when people didn't understand how something happened, their first course of action was to point their fingers towards witchcraft. Yeah. Here's I mean, another. Logic. Obviously. Well, here's another sign you may be a witch back in 1692. You've exhibited strange, stubborn, or unladylike behavior. Can I see a show <laughs> of hands? Do any of you... Greg, hands up. I've seen you be very oh, unladylike. I am... Some kind of unladylike. I, you know I what? I'm just kidding. I'm very ladylike. Uh, I've been. We've all hung out with you. Trust us. You're a liar. You're a liar. You are a liar. Um, Dave knows. Yeah. Stop lying. Oh, hey, you, you guys are not alone, apparently, because Mercedes says, I fit all those as well, being black and Hispanic. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. Yep. Unbelievable. Done. She's done. Whatever they can find to convict you. That's what Sandra says. Hey, Typical come on. witch yep. nonsense. Come on. It is. Typical. That's Typical what a witch, witch would witch. say. I mean, <laughs> come on. And what they find are lady parts. That's what uh, makes you a witch. Right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Here is the last one on the list. Oh boy. Nipples. Uh -oh. Yes. No. It is right. Well, Isn't it like an extra too. one? So you're extra. Yes. We all have them. Greg, I thought so too. Wait, you what? Are a... An no, extra nipple. Not <laughs> nipple. Don't thing. listen to Greg. Can the we... show is called The Paranormal Sixty with Dave Schrader. Just ignore <laughs> Purple Man. I don't there. know. Can we continue saying the word nipple though? Just <laughs> yes. no. <laughs> Here's another clue that you are a witch. You are of low economic status. Hey, the... oh. show of hands. Uh, yeah, I mean... I got... Yeah. Oh, man. Those who were unable to support themselves financially were prime candidates for being accused of witchcraft. For example, Sarah Good relied on the community for assistance, often going from house to house begging for food. Because of this, she was disliked by neighbors and became one of the first women to be charged with witchcraft. <laughs> Weird. Witchcraft. What is going on with you, Dave Schrader? I, have, I don't know. You know, so having He's hung around, around with these ladies and watching it's, them it's hot. drinking yeah. out of half drank glasses of booze, people leave behind automatically. <laughs> I've seen <laughs> seen their witchy ways. Somebody <laughs> left this drink here. I'll drink. Yeah. <laughs> what a waste! Not oh, anymore. Ladies, call me Sarah now. Good. <laughs> let me let me calculate the findings. Oh. Burn oh. <laughs> When Monty you know Python jumps up to say burn the witch, you're screwed. <laughs> yeah. At least I'm going down in good company. Hey, uh, mm -hmm. instead of just running yeah. you guys out of here, now that we've had fun at your expense and proven to mm -hmm. everyone that you're witches, and you have a show yeah. called Into the Obscure that'll be airing on the Paranormal 60 audio mm -hmm. podcast channel every Wednesday, would you mind if we shared a few more news stories with you and you can weigh in oh, on your thoughts on these do. things? Please do. I would love it. That. Okay. Gre Greg, are you okay sharing the stage with these uh, talented people? You know what? I'm uh, I'm open to whatever, Dave. I'm mm. I'm easy and I'm he just said, happy yes, to go be ahead. here. Yes, mm. he's so excited. Greg, you know, you know mm. what that makes me think more of you. Um, <laughs> <Buffalo> <laughs> Trace, no. burn the witch. No, the witch. it's uh, Buffalo Trace is talking. You know, I got to go to Egypt earlier this year, ladies. Wow! And I got to yeah. see Egypt in its raw form. I got to see all the things Did that you? were driving people crazy back in the day. Yeah, and. This was a strange bit of, of history that I'm about to shed on you guys. I said shed. So <laughs> you did. Thank you. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. All right. Spatter. I something else. A misunderstanding. <laughs> a misunderstanding spawned a medieval mummy eating trend. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, ancient Egypt captivated cultures around the world long after its heyday. Egypt mania can be seen everywhere from the early 19th century French architecture to American fashion in the 1920s to Hollywood epic films. But before the Egyptian revival or tut mania, Europeans in the Middle Ages were taking their Egypt obsession to disturbing places. Many of them were desperate to get their hands on an authentic piece of mummy. Not to own as an artifact, but to ingest as medicine. 
an unfortunate linguistic misinterpretation led many people to think a mummified hunk of human flesh could cure a range of ailments from bruising to bubonic plague and anal warts. Yeah. <laughs> You're a witch. Yeah. <laughs> Mummy derives from mamia, a Persian term for bitmune, bit, bitumen, bitumen, oh. B-I-T-U-M-E-N, bitumen, or pitch, that naturally occurring sticky black substance, mm. a semi-solid form of crude oil, black tea, Texas gold, you know. <laughs> Centuries ago, it was commonly used for medicinal purposes as well. It was both ingested and applied topically to treat conditions like coughs, rashes, and broken bones. When Europeans first observed Egyptian mummies, they made note of the black gunk, a combination of oil, fat, resin, beeswax, and this bitumen, covering the preserved bodies. They thought it resembled mummia, so they named the corpses mummies after that material. Oh. Is that, huh? That's huh? horrible. Wait for it, wait for it. Or oh, you that's know, good. yeah, that's yeah. good. Don't who you realize you learn eaten, something? Who hasn't eaten mummy? Really? I mean, honestly. I haven't. How how many mummies do you think they went through? Like, I think a lot. Like, a lot. Let's, so like many. that's why they're rare now. Let's yeah. look at the story and find out. Uh yeah. Oh, oh gosh, God. All right, so. That's where the confusion begins. People heard the word mummy and assumed it had the same healing benefits as bitumen. They began seeking out mummies, not just for the pitch-like coating of the bodies. Look at this. This is the pitch-like coating. Let me see if I can... Ugh. Look at that. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That was, I, you know what, though? It's it called Etapatia. Yeah. yeah, I'm not going to lie. It does look like jerky, a bit like jerky. Delicious. I can understand I the confusion. Yeah. Yum. They began seeking out mummies, not just for that pitch-like coating on the body, but for the centuries-old <laughs> flesh itself. Soon, mummy and mumia lost any meaningful distinction. People in medieval Europe used medicinal mummies the same way they used bitumen. Some applied it directly to the affected area, anal warts included, while oh, yeah. others ground the dried flesh and bones into a powder, mixing it in their drinks. The public viewed ancient Egypt with awe during this period, and it wasn't a stretch for them to believe medicine made from pharaohs would imbue them with divine protection. But this was another misunderstanding. The mummies found coated in black resin and shipped to European apothecaries were almost always peasants, never royalty. Mm. So you're thinking what you're doing is you're getting like high class lunch meat and you're getting the Oscar <laughs> Mayer pimento loaf. <laughs> I'm going to get me some of that bitumen. <laughs> yeah. For the anal warts? Hey. Yes. You know? I'm not here to judge. We all know. Uh, yeah. The more you know. Let's see. Well, we all have faults. Despite its misguided origins, the medieval mummy eating trend continued. My God. How long do you think it continued? Seriously. I don't know. It like depends. Hundreds of years. Well, it depends so on how, how thin you slice them. Oh. <laughs> Ding, ding, ding. I think he wins. Mm. He's won. 500 years. What? No. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Europeans. The Victorians still did it. No wonder we're like leaving their country and starting our own. Our people are like, you're bloody stupid. I'm not eating it. <laughs> Mummy balls. Good day, sir. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good Lord. Uh, when inventory dwindled. After 500 years, apothecaries huh. started supplementing mummies with products made from fresh human meat. No. <laughs> no. They're removing mummia from its etymology. In some yes. cases, patients Etymonum. didn't even have to be tricked into dining on recently deceased by eating flesh and blood became a fad in itself, with many doctors claiming such Remnants had more life-giving properties compared to the dissected husks that had been sitting in tombs for centuries. Mm -hmm. They were also easier to come by than genuine mummies from Cairo. People who couldn't afford to go to the apothecary would sometimes hang around executions, where the executioner <laughs> might sell them a cup of the condemned's blood at a bargain yeah. price. Yeah. No. Well, you know, what's better yeah. than a nice yeah. cut of fresh oh, meat? Good. Yeah, no. seriously. It's so just oh, I'm a pepper, butcher. he's a pepper, she's a pepper. Would you <laughs> like to be a pepper too? By the 18th century, though, using human meat, 
huh. or mummified or otherwise as a cure-all had started to fall out of fashion. Oh, that's too bad. Mm. That is unfortunate. Oh. Mummy parts had become a rarer sight on medicine shelves, but that didn't mean Westerners weren't over their Egyptian obsession. They were still enamored with the legendary civilization, but instead of eating its long-dead citizens, they channeled it through artistic expression. Hmm. Though art... And architecture couldn't cure internal bleeding or plague. It was a much healthier form of Egypt mania than what the Europeans had been practicing for centuries. However, I will say, when you look at what they were offering, <laughs> they do look tasty. And every year here at the Minnesota Great Get Together, our Minnesota State Fair, Mummy on a Stick oh, is so cute. amazing. Yeah, those yeah, are adorable. So oh, what's on? I wouldn't, adorable I wouldn't, and I delicious. Looks, Hot Looks like a fettuccine? hot dog. Yes, hot dog fettuccine and uh, cream cheese. I don't cream cheese maybe. And what are making up the eyes? Olives maybe. Olives. Uh, yeah. What no, do they bitumen. do in Minnesota, Dave? Bitumen, bitumen. bitumen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You get a point at the camera when you do yeah. that. Bitumen. Yeah. Bitumen. <laughs> Is that it? He's trying to teach you guys. You're new to this whole. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Man, I don't know. We got to practice screen. that maybe later. I know it's hard. You should. You should. And because you didn't know that, also another sign. You're a witch. <laughs> Burn the witch. Burn them all. Hey, for all of you in and around the Twin Cities area or close enough to drive, come on out for cocktails and spirits at the Lexington in St. Paul with me on October 30th. I got a chance to investigate the haunted Lexington Hotel, restaurant, not hotel, restaurant. Sorry, my brain is befuddled by witchery, obviously. And I we got to investigate it earlier this month, and we are going to show the evidence we captured, both video and audio evidence. And tickets are on sale. You get uh, hors d'oeuvres, hors d'oeuvres. Maybe there'll uh -oh. be some mummy parts. Who knows? Oh. Could be mummy on a stick. There's also <gasps> divine cocktails that they whip up for just this event. Tickets are on sale. You can go to darknessevents.com to find out more and check that out. We've got another eating story. <gasps> and we're going to have Greg share that right after this. Oh. Innovation, creation, vitality, and joy are the pulse of mysoultopia.com with many custom creations for the mind, body, and spirit, along with classes, intuitive sessions, coaching, and healing energies. MySoulTopia.com strives to bring sophistication with a twist to the metaphysical and the holistic market, while raising the community's vibration and channeling the new paradigm, which means new and exciting adventures for all. MySoulTopia.com is utopia for your soul. Visit MySoulTopia.com, your one-stop shop for all your metaphysical needs. Offering hand-selected crystals and crystal jewelry with prices to fit every budget. MySoulTopia.com offers the best selections of tarot and divination cards by top designers. Expertly curated and award-winning book collections from top authors on every subject you'll need on your spiritual journey. My Soultopia is also proud to offer the finest singing bowls and an eclectic collection of the most amazing gemstones, crystals, and crystal jewelry from the top metaphysical designers in the world. MySoultopia.com is always your one-stop shop for award-winning mixes of Florida water, sage spray, and other spiritual protection. So begin your journey with the best resource, MySoulTopia.com. That's MySoulTopia.com. Why mess with the rest when you can start with the best? MySoulTopia.com. Again, that's M-Y-S-O-U-L-T-O-P-I-A.com. MySoulTopia. Yeah. Playing. Hold on. Are you like so many others, coming into abilities that you don't understand and unsure where to safely begin this journey of exploration? Well, award-winning psychic and medium Michelle Welch has the answers. Michelle Welch is the author of the award-winning book, The Magic of Connection. Stop cutting cords and learn to transform negative energy to live an empowered life. 
In this book, you'll learn how spirituality and intuition can help you heal your inner wounds while staying connected to the people that you love. Author Michelle Wells shows you how to work with the energies that connect all people, and you'll learn to transform and transmute negative energy in ways that support your personal spiritual journey and help you reach a more powerful and meaningful life. In her newest book, Spirits Unveiled, a fresh perspective on angels, guides, ghosts, and more, Michelle teaches you how to identify and deal with the spiritual energy around you every day. Each chapter features a specific kind of spirit and teaches you how to sense its presence, identify and connect with it, and set the boundaries you may need, all while demystifying the process and making it easy and accessible to everyone from the beginner to the expert. You'll learn how to understand elementals, connect with an ascended master, protect against psychic attacks, astral travel, and more, providing meditations, visualizations, and inspiring stories. This book helps boost your intuition and spiritual experience. Unleash the real you. Get the books, The Magic of Connection, Stop Cutting Cords and Learn to Transform Negative Energy to Live an Empowered Life, and Spirits Unveiled, a fresh perspective on angels, guides, ghosts, and more. Buy them now wherever you purchase your books or by using the link on today's program guide. Life is confusing enough. Why not make it easier with award-winning help from Michelle Welch? How amazing. So That's make awesome. sure that you support all of our advertisers. And I put a list of them in every show program guide. Please go use those links. Take advantage of the great deals that they have available for our listeners and friends and followers around the world. It means a lot to me and it means a lot to them. We try to pick the advertisers and the people that we're a part of so that they are part of our community as well. All right. I do want to make a quick acknowledgement because we've been doing the show so fast and furious. I haven't had a chance to acknowledge the super stickers. Grace Hope throws us five bucks from the great state of Canada. That's not a state. It's, it's kind of like the fifty-first state. Let's be honest. That's weird. Yeah. Ben Turner drops ten bucks on us with a super sticker. Uh, Lena Litinois said it's Taco Wednesday. Just saying, go get them, Gregorama. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. And Tony drops another ten dollar bonus on us. Thank you so much, Tony. And then, ladies and gentlemen, drum roll, please. Lil Sprite <gasps> puts 50 bucks Whoa. in our oh, yeah. for this guy. Yeah. All because you made me laugh from the start and that amazing song. I want to thank nice. all of you that do nice. take a few minutes to uh, make donations. Those of you that can, thank you for doing it. This is by no means solicitation. I'm not asking you to do it, but if you want to, it would be better for your soul if you did. If you don't, you're probably going to burn in hell. I'm just, I don't make the rules. No. I just, I'm just no, here no. to share them it's with you. True. But Seriously, Thanks. thank you to everybody who donates and, and kicks a little love our way. And you can also Venmo at Paranormal60. And Todd, I get the money every week from you. Thank you so much, you and your lovely wife who've attended our events. Thank you for showing that and uh, and so many of the other people. Uh, some don't want me to, I guess, mention their names, so I won't do that out of respect. But we are back. This is the Paranormal 60 to 90 Minutes, uh, and we've got more stories <laughs> to share. Joining more us sport. tonight... We have the cast of Into the Obscure podcast that will be, you can find them live Tuesday nights, or you can find their audio right here on the Paranormal 60 Audio Network every Wednesday. And uh, it's great to have you ladies be a part of our, our family. So thank you for being here. We're very thank excited you. about thank it. You. Thank you. Kind of beyond excited. Yeah. There was well, dancing mean, involved. Maybe that's a show. <laughs> beyond excited. Beyond I'm excited. i show my hand. Yeah. After that extra content, reeling it back. Yeah. Uh, all right, Greg, we've got uh, we've got a couple more stories to share. Greg, what have you got for us? Yeah, you know all these stories that you've been telling is making me a little hungry. So, <laughs> a, uh, a woman dies after eating chocolate given by palm reader who predicted oh. her death. Oh, yeah. convenient. convenient. Crazy. Yeah. In a bizarre case from Brazil, a woman named Fernanda Valos Pinto died after consuming chocolate given by a palm reader who had predicted that she would die soon. The mysterious death of Pinto happened in August of this year. The shocking incident happened in Maceo, which is a, as you know, a hotbed of fortune tellers. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
uh, when, when Pinto was walking in the city center, she was stopped by an old woman who asked to read her palm. The old palm reader predicted that Pinto had only a few days to live. Then the woman gave Pinto a chocolate as a gift. Recalling how Pinto died after eating the chocolate, her cousin, Bianca Cristina, shared the details. Fernanda vomited. Her vision was blurred. Her body was soft. It was a matter of hours, Christina told Globo One. Her body was soft. Soft. That's soft. Weird. Okay. She normally I ran it soft. up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't no, know poison chocolate makes you normally normally people say flaccid but she didn't oh, want to yeah. Say flaccid, okay yeah uh, are we not going to talk about <laughs> are we not going to talk about how amazing this palm reader is how oh, did she, well, she I know. That? How, how did she get was it that? days or was it really just a couple hours that's you know, crazy the candy yeah. in her mouth I she know. is accurate yeah. as the candy was packaged. She didn't. Uh, it didn't occur to her that it would pose any danger, and she was hungry, so she decided to eat it. After eating the chocolate, Pinto started feeling ill, and uh, she in, and shared her ordeal with her family through text messages. She texted oh. her family, "My heart is racing. I threw up. I can oh. I have this bad, bitter taste in my mouth. My vision is blurry. I'm so weak." Explained Pinto. I leaned on the water tank and almost fell. I almost met God. I don't know why I feel like this, sis. I've been feeling bad all day. Uh, meanwhile, toxicology reports generated from biosamples of her autopsy reveal mm -hmm. imagine this high concentrations of pesticides. What? In the body. Yeah. Hmm. Pesticides. Yep. That's and a coincidence. That would be neurotoxins, yep. probably. Yeah, that's what that feels oh. like. Mm. Lots of vegetables, like fresh vegetables from the market. That yeah. Right? yeah. You know, though, what? you will say that there's very often uh, you don't see worms or bugs crawling on chocolate, so they're doing their job. Yeah, right. the pesticides <laughs> are doing great. Accurate. Yeah. yeah, investigations are on discerning whether it was the chocolate was the source of the poisoning or something else. Law enforcement authorities. I, think I could be going out on a, on a limb here. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm going to say the source of the poisoning might be mm -hmm. the palm raider, not the chocolate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The chocolate She's did just not really good. Her. I don't know what you're talking about. Really and she, when she reached out and said, thinner. <laughs> I wish I need to find me an angry gypsy that'll do that. There's her no way she had nothing her, to gain. Nothing her to wart gain. Finger and her crooked nose. <laughs> yeah. so, so anyway, she said investigations are to, trying to discern whether it, it was the chocolates were the source of Pinto's poisoning or something else. Law enforcement authorities are also trying to find out uh, if the fortune teller was hired. Oh. Oh. Does she have like a boyfriend or ex-husband that wants to get rid of her? Well, Luminita Valos, uh, her cousin said, I don't see why anyone would have a reason to kill her, but That's we don't her. know what's in anyone's heart, whether someone That's was her. ordered to kill her mm -hmm. or whether the woman did it just because she wanted to. Greg, you're Ooh. a cop. Every detective show, it's always that one that comes up and goes, we would have no idea. She's the one that paid her. Yeah. Hey, look at this. Allegedly. Look. Allegedly. Yeah. This is I mean, this went from sad to scandalous real quick. Hmm. Poison. Yeah. Do you think the police sad. there, they're like, do yeah. you think it's the chocolate? I don't know. Try the, try the wrapper. <laughs> <laughs> I no. Do a little you? bitter to me. Are you in France? Where are you? I, <laughs> I just started a little bit. Could be the poison was in the chocolate. That's not the Mexican that police. That might be, that might not, be French. I'm not <laughs> good with my geographical references. Actually, Brazil, they speak, por speak Portuguese. So maybe what do you speak? I mean, what is they happening have? there? Speak <laughs> you guys are doing great trip. tonight. Yeah. Wow. My Our heart is racing. Story. Our final story <laughs> is here and not, not, not too soon. A female Bigfoot has been photographed carrying beastly baby mm -hmm. through her woods on her back. Yeah. First of all. <gasps> Is that a good idea? You notice it's a mom and you call her baby Beastly? Beastly. That's piss yeah. off a mom. That's so nice. Coming for you. Yeah. Like, Man. would it be like I'm in a I'm in a park and I see Tressa walk by and I'm like, her child is beastly. <laughs> Watch you yourself. You, why would oh. we tolerate that? You wouldn't. No. I would assume you'd unleash the monkey to come beat me. <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> sir. <laughs> That's exactly what I would do. Exactly. <laughs> come on. You know how I know? 
<laughs> a witch. A witch. She's, she's anyway. throwing chocolates at you. <laughs> All right, now these are claimed to be high resolution images. Oh, look at that. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's a high really? resolution image of what many are claiming to be a Bigfoot, and it surfaced online, once again rekindling heated debates on the subject. Wow. The uh, news has learned that the picture in question was captured in upstate New York. I'm going to, you know what? I'm For once, I'm going to not, I'm going to uh, try to try to edit this story. I'm going to read it as written oh. so that you see the stupidity of, people that call themselves journalists come on, today. Come on, come okay. on. Wait, hang on. Here it comes. High resolution image of what may are cl claiming to be Bigfoot have surfaced online, once again rekindling heated debates on the subject. News.com has learned that the pictures in question were captured in upstate New York and show an alleged Sasquatch with what <laughs> appears to be a baby on its back. The images, which allegedly show a happy Bigfoot family, have divided the internet. Discussions and speculations regarding the images were posted on a website named The Crypto Crew. The author of the page said, The Beacon Bigfoot videos have been around for a little while now, and most, including me, think they are nothing more than fakes. Fraud. Wow. Yeah. Look at the Beacon beast in baby. New York Look State. At him. Yeah. Aww, it's, like, uh, uh, it's like a it little uh, baby. Sloth mm -hmm. or something. Beacon in New York State oh. is believed to be a Bigfoot hotspot. In fact, a dedicated oh, yeah. blog has started to look at pictures from the area and possibly find concrete pictorial evidence of the existence of Bigfoot, according to the Daily Star. The author of the page also commented on the picture of the Sasquatch with a baby Bigfoot, saying, yep, it's a family thing. I hope they are on private property because someone might shoot them. Sure, oh. bastard. Uh Okay. However, others seem really to be really there. convinced about the validity of the photos, as one person commented on the baby Bigfoot picture on Facebook, writing, Mama with a newborn. They wash them off in nearby creeks right after the birth, she wrote. Wow. Uh, huh? Mm -hmm. what, oh, what's happening? Right. That's... Why would Wait, you need to wash them off? Hold on. I'm getting breaking news. They, Yes, they have actually been able to go in using satellites to get a closer image of the Bigfoot and her baby. Let's uh, take a look. <laughs> oh, so cute. I can't oh, see how anybody baby. could deny that. Best. Looks Beastly freshly washed baby. in a lake, Nicely doesn't it? Nicely washed. Oh, <laughs> family. Freshly oh, washed. Freshly washed. Nothing cuter than a newborn. Seriously. Nope. Yeah. Bouncing baby blubbery boy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, these ladies are into the obscure, and you can watch them live every Tuesday night and listen to their podcast here on the Paranormal 60 Podcast Network. Now, every Wednesday, Tressa, Jenny, yes. Kara, oh. thank you so much for joining us tonight. <laughs> thank you. No, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank no, you. I said thank you. Good. No, no, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank All right, you. before we go, we also like to share on the show. Uh, do any one of you have a ghost detail that you'd like to share with us? Kara. Kara. Oh, Kara, okay. share. Okay. okay. Can I? Did I just freeze? No, you're fine. Don't worry about okay. your image. Yeah. So, hey, no, it just froze for me. Okay, so let me tell. Mm -hmm. It's a cool thing that I think just happened. So the last time <laughs> I was at, yep. Yep. Uh, the last time I was at the prison, there was, it yes. was the weekend you were there. So that was, mm -hmm. uh, really exciting. And that night, uh, two of Rob Johnson and Nikki, who you also know, turned mm -hmm. around and saw me behind them. It was my doppelganger. And I was actually with you in a gallery and they came running in saying, how long have you been here? And they both swore up and down that they saw my doppelganger, which is pretty, uh, it was the first time for me being seen as a doppelganger, but it's pretty normal for, you know, for us to hear voices of people that we know or see, see them. But at your event at the school that we just went to a couple weeks ago, somebody came to me, their friend had taken a picture earlier that day down the gallery and you can see a little tiny doppelganger me down at the end of the gallery during the day. So the same gallery, they saw me like behind them, like outside the gallery at the end. And my, I was like way down 
I, and when I saw the picture, I just like, you know, I could just feel it, you know, just, I knew immediately and yeah, no, that was, that is my coolest thing. Why is this the first time I'm yeah, hearing this? Seriously though. What are you talking on. about? You were there when she showed me the picture. <laughs> I wasn't. No. <laughs> what? Of us were. Together. No, hold on. <laughs> you know, I got to rethink this whole podcast thing. Thank you. These I... kinds of secrets. <laughs> Secret well, maybe they'll be with us. Of everybody. <laughs> Come on, Maybe man. they'll be with us next week. Maybe they won't. But I can <laughs> tell you what will be here next week. Go to the Paranormal 60 Swag Shop and get your Paranormal 60 Cute. News Crew t-shirt. And you can get the Funko Pop style of each one of mm -hmm. us on the shirts for the Paranormal 60 News Crew. And don't forget, with the holidays right around the corner, looking for that special pumpkin stuff and gift, how about Messages okay. from Mothman, the book by Greg Lawson? Wow. Yeah, wow. with a board by yeah. Chip Coffee Cup. You can get that Ooh. book on Amazon.com or by visiting Greg's website. And what would that website be, Greg? It would be greglawson.org because I'm an organization. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Look at you, fancy. Or theparanormaldetective.com. Yeah, Greg Lawson messages from Mothman is out and available right now. It is so hot that even Popeye needs to put that fire out. Look at him go. Yeah. Yep. So thank you, ladies, for joining us. Thank you to uh, Sunflower Fox and the Chicken Leg for being a part of the show tonight with their song Shadow Girl. We've got links for Into the Obscure in today's program guide and to find Sunflower Fox Band as well. Uh, until next week, when we're back again with more fun and more paranormal hijinks, for Greg Lawson, I'm Dave Schrader, and you've been listening to the very best in paranormal talk radio, no matter what the internet says. We are the Paranormal 60 News. It's Wednesday night, and I'm alone. The Paranormal 60s is on. It's just for paranormal freaks like me With poltergeists and ghosts and blues and UAPs You miss a word, you do a shot It starts to snowball and we laugh a lot It's just like drinking with your TV friends I'll be best out before tonight's show ends Dreaming the aliens are taking me away I'll go wake up till sometime late on Saturday It's Wednesday night and I'm alone the paranormal 60s on Traders on Traders on Traders on Shachi and the Colonel and the paranormal Detective always traders got me and they all will be directed He's got protective phrases and some crazy magic tricks Even Scully cannot save him from the voice of Stevie Nicks Traders on, traders on. It's Wednesday night, don't be alone. The paranormal 60s on. Now one day Dave might even put me on his show There's a ghost in my mom's face, but man, I live down there, I know It's Wednesday night, don't be alone The paranormal 60s are Traders on Traders on Ha <laughs> ha!